We now try to uncomment section one and then try to see what classes, what methods we have to implement. Okay, uncomment section one. So in Eclipse, you can say control forward slash. Okay, for section one, you can see that in line number five, it does not compile because we are referring to on the left hand side of an assignment, a type called birthday. And birthday uh, should be a reference type, which means it should be a known class name, but it does not compile. If you move your mouse over, it tells you that birthday cannot be resolved to be a type, which means we have not yet created this class uh, in our project. So let's do that right away. Okay, so go back to your project here and then you can right click on new and then class. That's called a birthday. Okay, if you do that, you can see a birthday class is created. Now you can see that this part over here already uh, is now compiled. However, this part is not. So let's see why not. If you move your mouse over over here, it tells you that the constructor birthday int int is undefined. This is because on the right hand side of an assignment, you're trying to use a new keyword, which means you're trying to create a new object. Whenever you're trying to create a new object, you have to call the correct constructor. In this case, we're saying that we're going to create a version of the constructor in the birthday class where there should be two parameters. One is for taking an input like one, which is integer. The second parameter is going to take an input like 11, which is also an integer. So what we should do is we should really try to create the two integers inside uh, into this constructor. So let's go back to birthday here. Let's create a constructor over here. Birthday and then integer. It seems like this one should just be, if you look at the uh, uh, corresponding output, it should be one and 11, okay? So which means when you are trying to, let's read a little bit further. You can see we're trying to create a birthday objects and then store its address into BD01. And BD01, somehow you can query about its month and you can query about its day. And then if you compare this line over here with the corresponding output, you can see the month should be a one and the day should be 11. Okay, so that means when we are passing the argument over here, one should be the month and 11 should be the day. So not just that we have to pass the arguments, we have to make sure the arguments are properly stored as the values of the attributes for the birthday class. So this is what we should do. Okay, so now you can say int month and int day. However, just defining this is not enough, even though you can see that this line compiles properly. However, you can see this line does not compile because we haven't supported get month and get day. Let's do that first. Okay, now let's go back to Eclipse over here and then go to birthday class. Let's now do uh, public integer get month and then it's gonna return something. Let's just return minus one just for, just to get everything to compile. And public integer get day return minus one. Okay, let's go back there and then you can see everything compiles now. However, if you try to execute this code, let's uh, click on to execute, you will see that we only get one and then minus one, minus one, right? The reason that you got minus one, minus one, because we only return minus one, minus one over here. However, if you go back to the PDF, that tells you what the output should be, it should be one and 11, which means after we set the month to be one, and the day should uh, to be 11. Somehow these two values have been stored into the birthday objects. And when you try to call the get month on this particular context object, which is here, and it should return just one, right? As you can see, it should be uh, one over here. And if you try to call the uh, get day method on the same objects, it should return back to you 11. Okay, that's something we want to make sure. So the way to do that is by introducing attributes into the uh, the class, okay? Let's go to the class over here. So we can say private integer month, private integer and day. So for encapsulation purpose, if you have things like uh, month and day, the attributes, you should declare them as private. And then we'll try to get define the accessors like a get month and get day to for the for the other client classes to access them. 
Okay, so now we want to make sure whatever parameter we pass over here are properly stored into the month and day uh, accordingly. Okay, how do we do that? We can use this dot month is assigned to month, and this dot day is assigned to day. Okay. Okay, so now after this constructor here, that means after this line, we have properly store one as bd uh, month and we have store 11 as bd day. So we want to make sure these two methods return the right values. Let's go back there. Let's do that. So return this dot month and then we say this dot day. Okay. And now if you try to execute the code again, you will see that now we have the current the correct output. Okay, let's now do our JUnit test and make sure uh, we got everything set up. Okay, so now you can go to File and then New and then JUnit test case. So now we can just call the birthday book test. Okay, we'll do one by one and then make sure you add JUnit 4 into the path. Okay. Okay, and then we say finish. Okay, so now let me just call it test birthday. Okay, let's do that very quickly. So now you can see this test case over here is some output to the console. But as we learn about test driven developments, you also want to automate all your test cases into JUnits. Okay, so now let's do that. Birthday BD01 is new birthday and then one and 11. So what we want to uh, ensure two things, assert equals. So now we want bd01.get month to be one. And we want to assert equals and then 11 to be bd01.get date. That's what we want. Okay. So now just one, uh, the convention for JUnits, uh, the assert equals method is, so the first argument should be the expected value and the right, uh, the second one should be the actual value that's produced by your program. Okay. That's why I put in this particular order. Okay. So now let's execute this JUnit test. You can see there's a green bar. Okay. So we are now, we, so we have verified in two ways, both the console output and the JUnit test, but later on, uh, we, whenever we make a change to our code, we do not have to run the console output anymore and compare with our eyes manually. We can simply just execute the JUnit tests automatically. So that's really the beauty of and convenience of JUnit tests.